Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, angular momentum. Here's our definition of angular momentum. It's r cross p, the vector form. And we're going to expand this with the determinant. And we have i hat here, y times p z minus z times p y minus j hat x p z minus z p x plus k hat x p y minus y p x. And we don't have to worry about the order of any of these because we never have two in the same dimension. So you don't have an x p x for example. There you'd have to be careful. So we have the three components of the angular momentum, which you can remember in the cyclic form. This is one, two, three, x, y, z, and then you flip the uh, y and a z and put a minus sign. Here this is two, three, one. See, one, one for the x, two, three. It's cyclic. So that's the uh, idea here. If you uh, use that minus sign in here, you'll get the z, p, x first and the x, uh, p, z second. But if you remember the cyclic, what comes after y is z, and then x is an x, then minus sign and flip these two, z and x. And then for the uh, z, we want here one, two, three, x, y, z, and then put a minus sign and flip the x and the y. Notice that we don't have two of any in the same variable, so we don't have to worry about the commutator, you know, being non-zero and worrying about the order. We don't have to do that, but we're going to have to worry about that next. When we figure out a commutator here, and we'll take L sub x and L sub y, so simply we put in by substitution what L x is and what L y is, and this commutator can be worked out as four commutators. We have the y p z with the z p x, and then the minus sign here, y p z with the x p z with the minus sign, and then we have minus z p y with the z p x, and then we have two minuses give you a plus z p y with the x p z. So these are the commutators that have to be figured out, and if we go to the next line, we can see that we have to be careful now because we do have some with the same dimension. Uh, so we pull out the ones that are not the same here. Y and PX can be pulled out, but we have to keep the PZ and the Z in there because the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And then here we can pull out the Y and the X and keep the two PZs in there, although we'll see that since that's the same uh, operator that it'll commute with itself, no problem, that'll be zero. And then here I pull out the PY and the PX and I have ZZ in there, that will be zero also because it's the same operator. And then here I pull out X and PY and have Z and PZ. So two of these come out to be zero very easily. Uh, that would be the commutator where the operators are the same. So, you know, A times A minus a times a is zero. So we have zero two places. Here's a zero for the pz, pz commutator and zz the commutator is also zero. So that leaves the first and the last and notice this is your Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Remember x, p, x here a commutator is i h bar. So this is with the z dimension so that's i h bar and x, p, y hangs around and here we have it flipped, so this is minus i h bar and the y p x hangs around. So this gives us a subtraction here of two uh, terms. We have i h bar out in front, we have x p y minus y p x, and notice this is neat, x p y minus y p x, look, it's L sub z. So we have this neat little result that the two x and the y, the commutator gives the z. And you can show that if you have here l sub y and l sub z, you get this x in a cyclic form, one, two, three, x, y, z, and here x, y, z. In fact, in general, you will find that you get here the levi Chavita symbol. So if you have one, two, this is three, so, that would be the case here, one, two, three, x, y, z. And then if you have the cyclic results where you have, say, two, three, one, the Levi-Civita symbol gives you a one. 
and here 3, 1, 2, again, gives you the 1. If you flip the J and the K, flip the X to the Y, you'll get a minus sign here, minus sign there. If you flip this, minus sign there, because then it will not be in order. You'll have, instead of 1, 2, 3, you'll have 2, 1, 3. That takes care of it here. And if the two happen to be the same, a, a commutator uh, involving an operator with itself is going to give 0, and if any two of these indices happen to be the same, the levy Chavita symbol gives you zero. So this is a very nice way to give you this relationship. And then we say, wait a minute, we've seen something like this before. When we have these spinners, this is interesting. In other words, this is suggesting, this is abstract mathematics here, suggesting that these are related to angular momentum in some way. We got that two there, and to get rid of that two, Look at this neat little result to get rid of the two. Uh, here, we need the h bar to get angular momentum units, and we got to get rid of the two somehow, so the commutation relation looks exactly like the L relation, so I don't want the two in there. So here's how I can do that. If I divide both sides of this equation by two, I have a two here in the denominator, a two there, and then what I will do is bring this two over for this one over here. So I have then two, 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 dividing each by two, and then that two goes away, and that commutation works when I divide the poly matrices by two. The h bar has to be there for the units, and we know that the electron has these values. But the mathematics is telling you you better define something here which has the poly matrices divided by two. And if you do that, you'll get this looking exactly like this, which means angular momentum, and that's the intrinsic angular momentum of the electron. So let's do a little summary here. We have the orbital angular momentum having this relationship with the commutators, and the spin, intrinsic angular momentum of the electron, has the identical algebra that you see here, this algebra. and this total angular momentum is given by the sum of the two individual cases, your orbital plus the spin.